Hail, Holy Mother, who gave birth to the King, who rules heaven and earth forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the name of the Holy Spirit, we give you all. This evening, Mass is being offered by Carl Richardson. Brothers and sisters, prepare yourself to celebrate the sacred mysteries that's called to mind our souls. You were sent to heal the country of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners of Christ to mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, which is the Prince. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us our lasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your son to be our mother also, grant us that, persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further and more effectively each day the reign of Christ. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary for them to be circumcised in order to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go and Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it, the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go and the house of the Lord. As was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Let us all be joyful to the house of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, Jesus said to the disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. 
He removes every branch of me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise what a fitting response to the psalm for you this evening. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. As I tried to say at the beginning, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome home. So Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure and he's explaining to them the relationship that he has with the Father and the relationship that we have with him. And he describes himself as the vine and we are the branches and reminds us that we are to remain attached to him. Otherwise we can do nothing. And so, you know, keeping this in mind, we look at the current situation that we are in, and we're reminded that as vines of the true branch, we are still obligated to bear fruit. And so we have many different ways that perhaps we can bear fruit in these challenging times. As last night I received an email of a suggestion that we could do to help support the community that is supporting the community. You know, some of the forgotten healthcare workers, you know, like the PSWs that are working in our nursing homes on their feet all day. And uh, so a suggestion was made that you know, perhaps we could do something, provide them with a gift of socks, a few pairs of socks, new socks that would be comfortable and you know, good for their feet. And uh, maybe something else you know, to, to help their feet. You know, reminding of the gospel where Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, and as well the blessed mountain, you know, where the feet go. And uh, so, you know, in these challenging times, I know that some of you are, are still looking for ways to serve the church and to serve God. And I commend you for that. And I encourage you, of course, to continue. But we always as is necessary, keep in mind that we are the vines, Jesus is the branch, that we remain attached to him, we remain faithful to him, and he tells us, you know, that we can do great things, that he will refuse us nothing that we ask, that is, of course, according to God's will. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with possible joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that He graciously listen to the prayers and supplications of His beloved Son. May now be pleased to look upon us in our Lord. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, let us pray the Lord. Lord for the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer and those who care for them, 
and suffer with them. That their sorrow may be turned to gladness which no one can take from them. Let us pray for the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers that remain within the secret of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. O God, who art in heaven, O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Prove the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the body and work of human hands will become our spiritual plan. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O oh Lord, to our aid, and may He who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, sir. Lift up your hearts. Yes, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, 
showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with gospel joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. The Lord is holy, 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 God, 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 You are indeed holy, O oh Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chops, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the Lord, the Amen. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body of Christ, we may be gathered in one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with your life, may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine, divine teaching, he dared to say, our Father, who art in heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every rich to grant peace in our days, that for the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, our glory, and the first time, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. For God and our sin, for the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. And for this we go with, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord will be with you all. I'll reach out to the side of the peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Blessed is the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the eternal Father. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow is, I guess, the day of prayer for humanity. Uh, this came from a communique of the Higher Committee of the Human Fraternity. Dear fellow believers and brothers and sisters in humanity, our world is facing at the moment a great danger that threatens the lives of millions of people around the world due to the growing spread of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. While we reaffirm the role of medicine and scientific research in fighting this pandemic, we should not forget to seek refuge in God as we face this severe crisis. Therefore, we call upon all peoples around the world to pray according to each one's respective religious convictions, to observe fast, and to do good deeds to end this pandemic. May each of us, wherever we are, and according to the teachings of our own respective faith traditions and philosophies, seek divine help to rescue ourselves and the entire world from this adversity, to inspire scientists to find a cure for the virus, and to save the whole world from the health, economic, and human repercussions of this serious pandemic. As part of its efforts to realize the objectives of the document on human fraternity, the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity proposes Thursday, 14th of May, 2020, as a day of prayers, fasting, and works of charity for the good of all humanity. In this regard, the committee invites all religious leaders and peoples around the world to respond to this call together, to beseech God, the Almighty, to safeguard the entire world, to help us overcome this pandemic, to restore security, stability, health, and prosperity, so that once this pandemic crisis is over, our world may become a better place for humanity and for human fraternity than ever before. Amen. So those of you who are watching online, if you want to make your way to uh, the church so that you may receive communion, remember it's at the east side, so it's between here and the old convent where the ramp is. You may come there to receive communion. We're allowed 10 people at a time to come into the building. Uh, so because of the wind and everything, I'll be distributing communion inside, just inside the door there. So uh, rather than, you know, you don't have to come into the chapel. You're going to see me anyway. I talk to much. But anyway, and uh, if while you're here, you also want to pick up a palm, they will be available as well. You notice that there are people here for this Mass. Um, I didn't realize it until this morning when we had another meeting, Zoom meeting with all the priests, that we were allowed to have Mass with a minimum or a maximum of 10 people uh, present, not including the, uh, the priests. So we have the 10 people here this evening. And all the information is on the parish website, and you can find it under the COVID-19 updates. So we'll have it right there that, uh, about uh, the Mass, you know, for during this time. And uh, so I invite you to read it and to consider what is there for the other actions that you are asked to, to make during this time. So that perhaps you know we can uh, expand the numbers that we currently have for our masses. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Mass is ended. <laughs> <laughs>
Father, can I ask you one question? Everybody saying here in the whole world, but this isn't over yet. Shall I depart? 